Amidst all the discussions of who will win the presidency this year, who will win the Senate, who will win the House of Representatives, today we are going to, as our last episode in Election Month on Fight and Revive, narrow our vision a bit. We're going to look at two very important races for conservatives to hold, and that would be the races of Lauren Boebert in Colorado and House Freedom Caucus Chair Bob Good in Virginia. Buckle up. Here we go. It's going to be an interesting episode today on Fight and Revive with Adam Boyer. America is no longer one nation under God. Are you ready to fight for a revival? Well, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Fight and Revive with Adam Boyer. So today we're going to look at two articles predominantly which explain pretty well the state of the races for Lauren Boebert in Colorado, Bob Good in Virginia. We're going to start with Congressman Good here in Virginia in my home district actually, Virginia's 5th Congressional District. Um, I go to a lot of Congressman Good's events. I help out with his campaign frequently. Um, that's one of the ways you get to see often the speeches I post on the channel uh, of the different um, people speaking for Bob and Bob speaking and speaking of which actually before we get started let me let you know um, if you watch the channel frequently you've probably seen a lot of YouTube shorts recently of different speeches from a lot of conservative members in Virginia and otherwise that are uh, speaking on behalf of Bob and that was from a big event from Bob's what he calls the Freedom Fighters tour that he did just a week or two ago wrapped up <clears throat> and so I recorded that entire speech um, or all the speeches in one long video about an hour long and that entire video of all the different conservative heroes speaking that were there at Bob's event some are local that you'll find out about and you know be able to be caught up to speak with some really cool local people we've probably never heard of such as some delegates um, you will get to hear from some national figures like Matt Gates. so that full video I'm posting little excerpts from the video from different speeches in the form of YouTube Shorts. I've been posting those, I'll continue to, and then the entire full video will be released maybe as a midweek special, uh, maybe on this Friday as the next episode. I haven't decided yet, but that video will be up very soon. So now, let's get into it. Here's an article from CNN of all places, believe it or not, and actually, well, decently well-written article. Uh, Embittered Republicans plot to knock off House GOP's hard-right leader in Virginia primary feud. GOP's hard-right leader, of course, being Bob Good. Okay. Good, the leader of the House Freedom Caucus and one of eight Republicans who voted to oust Kevin McCarthy from the speakership has been at the center of internal GOP infighting that has left their party's agenda in tatters and they're a conference embroiled in a bitter civil war. Now Van Orden has joined hands with a band of House Republicans angling to knock Good off in his June primary by propping up his primary opponent, John McGuire. A tactic long view, the yada yada, or I'm going to skip this on this so the whole video is not just me reading the article. Uh, Derek Van Orden, you know, Bob's a very bad guy, uh, etc., etc., but Good is undeterred. <clears throat> as he barnstormed through the district last week with fellow GOP hardliners such as Representatives Matt Gates of Florida, Andy Biggs of Arizona, and Chip Roy of Texas, they don't mention him there, but Andrew Clyde as well of, I believe, Georgia, um, Good said voters in his district don't care what his colleague from Wisconsin thinks, that being Van Orden. And he pointedly accused many of his Republican colleagues in Washington of casting votes that hurt the country and undermined the conservative cause. They've never heard of Derek Van Orden. They could care less what Derek Van Orden thinks, Good said of his constituents later telling CNN that questions about his Republican colleagues turning against him are, quote, stupid. Rhino's establishment moderates do nothing to influence Republican primary elections, Good added. Conservative, courageous warriors like those endorsing me today are being and being here with me today are the ones who can, my constituents care about. We'll pause here a second for this article, and we'll look at some of the different endorsements that the two candidates have. I'm going to pull it up here on my computer. Um, Congressman Good has been endorsed, like I said, uh, Matt Gates of Florida, Andy Biggs, Andrew Clyde, uh, Mark Meadows, former Trump chief of staff. Um, they've been very vocal. They were going around with Bob doing different um, speeches and events with him. Very vocal about how they want Bob back in Congress. I think I mentioned Chip Roy. Um, another guy who has not explicitly endorsed Bob, but he said Bob's opponent, uh, Rhino John McGuire, he said, he put out a truth on True Social that just simply said McGuire equals McCarthy. So it wasn't an endorsement of Bob, but it was telling voters of the 5th District, don't vote for McGuire, vote for Congressman Good, which is really big for Bob, too, that a lot of these uh, really people close to Trump and known as Trump allies are endorsing him because the whole, the, the only thing, because Bob is an incredibly conservative, very talented, very 
good, godly man and good congressman, no pun intended, has been the whole knock that McGuire's used on him, trying to use it as a wedge issue, is that Bob doesn't like Trump. And that's because Bob, like myself, supported Ron DeSantis in the primary. However, it was not a Bob betrayed Trump, like they would have you believe. No. Instead, all that what all that was the case was that Bob simply thought Ron DeSantis was the better choice, as did I. The day Ron DeSantis dropped out, and it was on the general election that one, because Nikki Haley wasn't beating Trump, honestly. Um, so Bob endorsed Trump that day, and now he's fully on board with Trump, and he's supporting him for the general. So I don't know what more you want from him. Um, obviously, there's not much more he could do. But it's very obvious that he's pro-Trump, pro-Trump agenda, and that's the, this is just the straws that the McGuire campaign is grasping at. Um, so some endorsements that the two different candidates have. Bob, like I said, Meadows, Biggs, Clyde, Gates, Roy, um, some really good organizations like uh, Eagle Forum, Turning Point Action. Um, I mentioned Mark Meadows. Rand Paul has endorsed him. Uh, meanwhile, for McGuire, his list of endorsements is actually pretty much as telling. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, who simply has a bone to pick with Bob, that's why she endorsed McGuire. Jen Kiggins, Rhino. Morgan Luttrell, never heard of him. Uh, Mike Rogers, Rhino, um, and known for it. Austin Scott, Derek Van Orden, Ryan Zinke, all Rhinos. Um, congressmen that want Bob booted from Congress. All those guys. Mike Rogers, they all have horrible scores in terms of like conservatorship, conservativeness, I guess I'll say for the word. They all have terrible scores. Mike Rogers draws in, I believe, 61%. Um, he's, he's just a flat-out rhino. There's no other way of putting with it. And of course, I know that term gets thrown around loosely a lot, but Republican in name only does describe a lot of these people perfectly. So McGuire's list of endorsements are just as telling as Bob's list of endorsements. Do they say you can tell a man by his enemies, and you largely can with, who's Bob, with who Bob's enemies are. Anyway, back to our CNN article. This is the most important primary in the country, said Matt Gates, who led the charge to Alice McCarthy. Bob is our masthead. Bob Good is our leader among House conservatives to get us on the same page to ensure that it is the people's interests that rise above the special interests. They know that they hate us. They know that they hate us. But you know what? There are more of us. In an interview on Friday, McGuire, a former Navy SEAL, and he's very proud of that, uh, said Good's conduct is, quote, embarrassing that the congressman's, quote, name calling of fellow Republicans is, quote, so childish. John McGuire, who throws around the terms, uh, calls Bob establishment, calls Bob Rhino, but no, our side's the only one that does the name calling. Um, I believe that my opponent wants to burn it all down. No solutions kind of guy, McGuire said. I think that we need leaders that want to grow the party and unite our country. So this is the classic establishment line that McGuire is going with. Bob Good wants to burn it all down. He has no solutions. I want to unite our country. What that is code for, obviously, is Bob is a very strong assertive. He does not bend with the Democrats, and he doesn't even really deal with the squish sort of moderate Republicans. Bob is a hardline conservative, which is what this country needs, someone who will not bend on principle, even if it, right now it doesn't ha give them a majority in Congress or otherwise. But uh, And then the whole unite our country, that simply means give the Democrats what they want, vote with the Democrats. If you don't believe that, well, no, I'm sorry, that's, that's up to you, but that's simply what that means. If you've been in politics for any length of time, you'll know this. Uh, McGuire added, if you're helping the Democrat team to take out the Republican team, who is the rhino? Bob wasn't taking out the Republican team. He took out John McCarthy, John McCarthy, fitting actually, Kevin McCarthy, who was indeed a rhino, and put in a more conservative, albeit still to this point disappointing, Mike Johnson, also a Republican. Uh, Good, 58, who won his first race in 2020 by knocking off a moderate GOP incumbent, Denver Riggleman, is one of four Republicans who are being targeted by members from within their own conference. I've talked at length uh, about Denver Riggleman on the show, or rather, uh, my cousin Luke has. When he was on the show, we were talking about different campaign tactics Republicans should and shouldn't use. I'll try to remember to link that if you want to go and watch that. Uh, different campaign tactics Republicans should and shouldn't use when, uh, when uh, campaigning. Uh, Denver is a rhino, and again, I use the term very specifically, who, since uh, being ousted by Bob back in 2020 at a very good convention, um, he has gone on to be a part of the January 6th committee, part of Hunter Biden's defense team. Um, he officiated a gay wedding, which is why, um, really, what mounted the resistance to get him out in the very red 5th district. Um, and I should say, since um, Denver Riggleman was ousted, uh, when Democrats controlled the redistricting like they did in Virginia, redistricting has taken effect since then, and Bob's district is still more liberal, uh, is now more liberal than it was back in 2020, 
But um, in 2022, albeit the Democrats didn't put up much of a ground game, uh, the one primary opponent Bob had, none of those candidates were great, but Bob still won his reelection in 2022 to his second term in Congress by 20 points, just shy of 20 points. I think it's about 18. And so now he's running for his third term. Uh, asking if Goods' vote to oust McCarthy prompted the House GOP effort to defeat him, Georgia Representative Austin Scott said, quote, it has something to do with that. So um, another thing is, it's very obvious that McCarthy and these uh, rhinos in Congress, these establishment members of Congress, are coming for Bob. Um, McCarthy said, uh, or McGuire said that McCarthy hasn't recruited him, but he has spoken with him. That was how he put it. Um, McCarthy told Bob, this is, I've mentioned on the show before, this was not a reported story at the time, but I've been informed by someone very close to the congressman that McCarthy told uh, Congressman Good on the House floor that he's been spending a lot of time in the district this year. So far, uh, that has not gone to fruition um, because I think they realize that, oh, you know what, if McCarthy's in this district campaigning for McGuire, that would actually help Bob. So, um, Moving on to the Trump factor, they talk about Trump factor, how Bob endorsed Ron DeSantis, and now he's supporting Trump. I talked about all that. Um, let's see here. We have more. Let's talk a little bit about Chris Lasavita before we move on to Lauren Boebert. Trump has yet to endorse anyone in the race, the article reads, but one of his top advisors, Chris Lasavita, told a local Virginia news outlet in January, quote, Bob Good won't be electable when we get done with him. Chris Lasavita is someone who has been a Virginia political court, uh, Virginia, excuse me, political, um, campaigner advisor for a very long time and he's since moved up into the national rank he's actually managing trump's campaign currently which is one of the things that uh gives me pause and a little bit of hesitation when predicting trump will win in 2024 because the man's career is built on two things losing campaigns for conservatives when he works for conservatives and when he works for rhinos and people trying to take out conservatives very much of the time as he often does he is known for being just a nasty, you know, low down, dirties political tricks in the book type of guy. Um, now, a couple weeks ago, as the article reports, La Civita was asked if he stood by that sentiment of Bob Good won't be electable. And La Civita said, quote, my focus is on electing Donald Trump, the 47th president. So he's indicating that his focus has moved away from Congressman Good's race, but with some of the tactics we're seeing from the McGuire campaign, it still has his fingerprints written all over it, as a wise man once told me. Um, Matt Gates said, I've done all I can to explain to President Trump that his agenda will be executed to its best efficacy if we have Bob Good in Congress. Quote, a fighting Republican Party will be there for President Trump. Bob Good leads the fighters. So it'll be very interesting to see. I don't think Trump's going to get involved with an endorsement in this race, not until the general. What I think is going to happen is Bob, Trump's not going to get involved. Uh, Bob will win the primary election by, we'll say, roughly 8 to 10 points. He'll go on to the general election. Trump will endorse him then. By then, it's not really going to matter because Democrats almost never win in the 5th District. Bob's going to put together. has a very good ground game going in the 5th. Um, the only reason for pause in this, whereas in 2022, Bob ran against a, a no-name guy, Dan Moy. He won by like 60 points in a convention. The reason for pause here is that, um, is that McGuire has more name recognition, albeit not all great, and he's a state senator. He has Kevin McCarthy's backing. The National Republicans are going to be pouring millions of dollars, uh, at least hundreds of thousands, if not millions, in the district trying to get rid of Bob. And then on top of that, the Virginia General Assembly has, since 2022, banned conventions for the uh, for Republican Party. It's not They didn't outright ban conventions, but they made it to where Virginia law and Republican Party rules about how conventions can be run conflict. So we're looking to see if that can be uh, worked around now. But basically... Conventions aren't happening right now in Virginia, meaning it's an open primary, or a primary, meaning that um, it's much more uh, favorable to establishment guys, um, meaning Congressman Good, who's a conservative, will have a little bit harder time winning a primary. So were this to be a convention, as we've seen historically in Virginia, in the Republican Party, Bob would probably win by 20 to 30 points. Being in a primary, my pr official prediction is somewhere 6 to 10 point win for, well, we'll say like 8 to 12 point win for Congressman Good. Probably six on the low side, 12 to 15 on the high side. Okay, let's turn our race to Colorado. Um, I'll admit I'm not as being this, that the 5th district is my home district, and Colorado is not. Um, I will read mar largely from the article from The Hill on this one and then give my perspective on it, and then we'll wrap up the video. Representative Lauren Boebert clinched the first spot on the ballot for her Colorado GOP primary after securing the highest percentage of delegate support on Friday at the district assembly. 
Uh, Bobert, who's running for the full two-year term and former rare Republican representative Ken Buck's Eastern Colorado District, received 41% support from the delegates gathered. That allows her name to be replaced first on the GOP ballot in June. The process to make the primary ballot is wonky and allows candidates different avenues to achieve it. Candidates can choose to simply collect at least 1,500 signatures from their district. They can choose to only go through the assembly process, where they need to earn at least 30% of the delegate vote, or candidates can do a mix of both clearing the 1500 signature threshold and earning at least 10% of the delegate vote, the Colorado News outlet noted. Bobert is doing a mix of both the signature and assembly. On Friday, Bobert only needed 10% to qualify through, this, through the hybrid system. And again, as it said, she received 41% support, which is a great sign. Uh, meanwhile, former state Senator Ted Harvey, some other Republicans received 26, 18, and 15% of support. Um, interestingly, Harvey failed to qualify because he chose to go as um, only through the assembly process and he so instead of getting the signatures he chose to do just assembly he needed 30 percent only got 26 which means right now at least he's not me on that ballot i'm not super familiar with how that uh that whole system works but it seems like he would not be on the ballot right now and he's the uh biggest challenge uh, primary challenge to bobert um it's the latest twist in an ever-evolving saga to win buck's seat the hills article reads Bobert currently represents the 3rd Congressional District in Western Colorado, but is choosing to run in Buck's District, the 4th Congressional District in Eastern Colorado, to avoid a repeat of last cycle's expensive house race. Bobert has also said she's looking for a fresh start since finalizing the divorce with her ex-husband. Um, Buck announced in November that he would not be seeking another term in the House, opening up his seat, but he threw a curveball last month, suddenly, might I add, you know, not intentionally at all, uh, when he announced he'd be retiring early to set up a special election to fill the remainder of his term. It's so obvious, the, the petty Republican politics, as always, the, the conservatives trying to get stuff done, the establishment in the way, as always. And so basically that's how he did it. Um, Buck said he's retiring. Bobert said she'd run for his seat. Then he's like, oh, I'm actually going to retire early. So actually, you, um, there's going to be a special election for my seat, giving someone incumbency in that special election for about six months until the November election, when Bobert would then be running for Buck's third congressional district seat. Um, so, he's trying to do that to weaken Bobert because Bobert can't stop and run, uh, drop out of her current congressional seat and run for this special election in the third because that would jeopardize the like two-vote Republican majority we have now. So, the Hill article explains it pretty well. That initially complicated Bobert's path to winning Buck's seat as it creates two elections. A special election to fill his term out in a GOP primary for the full two-year term starting in January, both of which would take place on the same day, June 25th. Bobert couldn't leave her seat to run for the GOP nomination in the special election, which would have triggered a special election for her seat and jeopardized and for her seat. Excuse me. I'll restart that. Bobert couldn't leave her seat to run for the GOP nomination in the special election, which would have triggered a special election for her seat and jeopardized the Republicans' slim majority in the House. But the Colorado Republican notched a win when former uh, Parker Mayor Greg Lopez was selected to be the GOP nominee for the special election. So this, he's selected to be the nominee for the special election in Buck's formerly 3rd Congressional District of Colorado. But that guy, Greg Lopez, said he only wanted to run for the remainder of Buck's term, giving Bobert a chance to win the June primary and then win uh, the, the full two-year term this November. And then, you know, uh, her district would then um, you know, be up for a, her current district would then be up for a different Republican uh, or Democrat, someone to take that seat. So if Greg Lopez sticks by his word, as it seems he's going to, as of now anyway, then everything will kind of work out. Uh, Bobert will get Buck's former seat and then someone else will take the fourth congressional seat in Colorado. Uh, given the red leanings in Colorado's fourth congressional district, whoever wins the GOP primary in June for Buck's seat will be the heavy favorite to win in November for the full four-year term. Sorry, sorry, full year term. So, um, I may have mixed it up earlier, I'm not sure. Um, Colorado's fourth district is Ken Buck. Colorado's third district is Lauren Boebert. Just to set the record straight, that's how the current seats are. Buck obviously just retired. So that seat, the third congressional district, is what Lopez is running for. The fourth congressional district is what Boebert currently holds. She's switching to run for the third, just to make everything clear. Hey guys, Adam here. 
uh, I was just editing this and I just realized I never cleared up that confusion. I got it completely wrong. So just to set the record straight, I'm editing it here. I now have the actual correct information. Ken Buck just retired, but he was in the fourth congressional district of Colorado. Bobert is in the third currently. She is running in the primary and then hopefully eventually in the general for the fourth congressional district, which is what Ken Buck held and what Greg Lopez is currently running for just to fill the six months between Buck and hopefully Bobert. Another candidate will then run in the third congressional district, which Bobert currently represents. Hope that set the record straight and cleared up any confusion. Sorry about that. Also, ladies and gentlemen, before we get back to the episode, I've recently been informed that the algorithm loves it when you watch one channel's videos and then you go on and watch another video from that same channel. So if you'd like to do that to help out this one, that'd be appreciated. And then Bobert said in a statement, quote, honored to have won the support and trust of CD4 delegates as the only Republican to qualify through the assembly process today. I kept my word and I will make you proud, she said. So basically, this is a big win for Bobert. Um, she is the a very good conservative. Yes, I know there have been questions about her uh, morality, so to speak, in the past. But if we kicked politicians out of Congress for questions of morality, there would be no Congress. And there would be uh, pretty much no Republicans either. Albeit, the Republicans are generally a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, I will use the term uh, morally grounded, I guess, than Democrats a little bit more. Uh, there would probably be like five members of Congress left, and that's why we kicked them, kicked them out. Bobert is one of the probably top ten most conservative congressmen slash women in the nation, and we need her to hold her seat. Okay, folks, so let me know what you think. If you live in either of these districts, I would love to hear your opinion, because like I said, especially in uh, Bo the third or fourth district of Colorado, as I've said before, if you're not in a district or a state, um, if you're not really involved in a race, it's hard to get a feel for how that race is actually going. I have a very good idea of how this district, Bob Good versus John McGuire, is going here in Virginia's 5th district because I live here and I have a very, very good idea of how it's going on. Um, although, uh, however, in Colorado, obviously I have no really political connections there right now, so let me know what you what all think even if you don't live in the district and if you do especially, comment below. As always, folks, thank you for watching. Stay tuned. Those speeches will be up either Friday, sometime uh, either this Friday or maybe next Monday as the episode we'll see. But stay tuned to the channel. Make sure you subscribe because it is coming. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Fight and Revive with Adam Boyer. We're already being shadow banned on YouTube. So if you would like this specific video and then subscribe to the channel, that would be greatly appreciated and help us reach more people. Thank you for watching.